Towns for Peaceful Solutions Riding and Training and here I am coming to you from my own living room. I'm sure a lot of you are in the same position I am. We are on quarantine, we're really not allowed out of our homes and that's stopping a lot of us from doing the things that we love to do such as going to visit our horses, ride our horses, be with our horses. I'm fortunate enough to have my horses outside but if any of you are like me, it is pouring down rain today and it, the weather has just not been cooperative. So we get one nice day and then five terrible days of rain. So I thought what better way than kind of bringing you guys a little bit of activity, getting you guys actually excited about riding again and giving you some pointers that maybe you can do inside your own home, some off course exercises and some ways to feel a little bit more connected and ready to go once our quarantine is lifted and we're all av available to go out and do the regular activities that we normally do. So I thought today I would be coming to you right from my Triple Creek custom made saddle that literally has not made it out of my home yet to go out to my barn to ride in. Uh, I haven't even tried it out so probably this is about the third time I've sat in it. All of my saddles are custom made by Triple Creek. I love their saddles. It's great craftsmanship. This is one that's actually a flex tree. It's the newest uh, model that I had designed. And I'm so excited to start riding in it. But I wanted to bring you uh, some exercises. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about foot placement. And I'm going to be talking about my book here, Solving the Riddles of Riding, which I wrote about five years ago. And this really is an in-depth look at the biomechanics of riding and alignment. So I thought what better way than to get you guys a little bit motivated, give you something, something to think about, and get you moving with some in-saddle and off-horse exercises. All right, everyone. So before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment and talk about foot placement in the stirrup at a little bit more in-depth, closer look. It doesn't matter if you're riding English, dressage, or Western. I primarily ride Western because it's comfortable for me and it's what I normally uh, use to ride when I'm starting young colts or I'm working with problem horses or even when I'm riding Western dressage or barrel racing. But what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking in terms of foot placement, if this was the stirrup and we're talking about the foot being placed in the stirrup, you want to make sure that the ball of your little toe is lined up with the outer bar of the stirrup, which is this portion, and the ball of your big toe is lined up with the inner bar of the stirrup. So when you put your foot and place it through the stirrup, you don't want to have your foot placed too far forward where you're actually on the middle sole of your foot. So you want to make sure that your foot is indeed weight bearing, which I'll show you when I climb in the saddle but you want to make sure that the weight is evenly distributed across the platform of the stirrup. So if we were to turn the stirrup this direction, your platform is here. So when I talk about the platform of the stirrup being level with the ground, you want to make sure that the platform of the stirrup is indeed parallel with where the ground would be. If you're riding and your leg is winging out, as I call it, or you ride with airplane legs, or duck feet, where you're starting to turn the stirrup corner out, it's going to affect your alignment and your balance throughout your body. So that's just one of the best tips that I can give you and one that I always tell my riders when they first get in the saddle. They want to make sure that the ball of their little toe is lined up with the outer portion of the stirrup and the ball of their big toe is lined up with the inner portion of the stirrup. If you're really a stickler about this every time you're in your saddle, you'll start to become accustomed and muscle memory will take over. You will also start to understand where in your body that you have asymmetry issues or where in your outer thigh or inner thigh that you might not be as strong in your adductors or your abductors. So a lot of riding in regular alignment comes out of your hips, which we will talk about further probably in an episode down the road. But when you're talking about foot placement, whether you're talking about an English dressage or Western stirrup, anytime you're putting the foot through the stirrup, I particularly ride off the balls of my feet. That way it gives you more power and a way to connect with the stirrup. So now I'm all mounted up on my saddle in my living room and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to place your feet in the stirrups. 
What you want to make sure, whether you have a horse beneath you or not, this is a fantastic exercise. Even if you have your saddle at home, you can set up a saddle stand in an area just like I'm doing here. You can do this in your barn before you ride. It is a great idea to do this because it will help you to align your body correctly without the extra of the horse moving beneath you because that adds so much more to it. The horse is going to challenge your balance in so many different directions. So being able to just master these simple techniques is one of the most paramount things I can teach you. Please excuse the fact that I have sneakers on. I did not feel the need to bring my dirty boots in the house. So obviously you'll be wearing footwear that is preferred for riding. But what we're going to do first is we're just going to reach down and place our feet in the stirrups. Now keep in mind the saddle is not stretched or broken in. This does come with pre-twisted stirrups, but where your stirrup leathers hang and the fact of how your saddle is set up is very, very important for your leg position. A lot of times when you're riding English uh, dressage, when you switch to a Western saddle, riders have difficulty because of all the leather beneath their thighs, but these saddles indefinitely move forward and backward, and it's one of the big deciding factors for me because I want freedom of movement with my legs. But when you're switching from Western and you're going to English and dressage, you have a lot of freedom of movement with your legs because of the stirrup leathers being so thin and you have a lot of mobility. So I find it very beneficial to ride in all different saddles. And for that matter, you want to make sure that your alignment is correct. So therefore you need a checklist so that you can always be checking yourself. A lot of us don't have the option of having an instructor with us or having another set of eyes watching us, it's a great idea to film yourself, to take still shots, and you can study those still shots, place lines over your body, and make sure that your alignment is indeed correct. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna place my foot on the platform of the stirrup. As I described earlier to you, I wanna make sure that the ball of my big toe is in fact lined up with the inside bar of the stirrup, and the ball of the little toe is in fact lined up with the outside bar of the stirrup. I'm going to reach down and do the same thing for my other stirrup. And you may come and find that both sides of your body are not symmetrical. Me, personally, every time I look down, it's always my left foot that I have to readjust. And it's very, very important that when you place your feet in the stirrups, that you're not rolling. Okay, so one of the imagery details that I love to use is... Make, think of wearing a pair of roller skates, and I'm not talking about roller blades, I'm talking about the old school roller skates with four wheels on them. Okay, you don't want to be doing a wheelie, okay, where you have so much heels down that you're locking the front of your ankles, the back of your knee joints, and the front of your hips. Heels down is almost an older technique that was used for a prolonged period of, of time. And I have found over the years that heels down really puts defects in my riding more than it helps effect my riding. So I want to make sure that when I do position my feet in the stirrup, I'm coming from a nature of a basic flat foot. Okay? And I'm also coming from an area of making sure that the balls of my feet are in fact level and even. That way I can ensure that the sole of my foot is getting all of the pressure needed in order to align properly. With that being said, you don't want to roll to the outside of your piggy toe, which is going to open up your thigh and roll your feet to the outside, often causing riders to duck feet. Okay, and turn their toes out and start gripping with their calf. This in turn is going to make a horse go faster or it will also make a horse more dull to your leg cues, just out of foot placement, something so simple. But just remember your foot placement is your platform for everything. It's like the basement before you build a house. It is, in fact, your foundation. With that being said, you also don't want to roll inward toward your big toe so that the outside portion of your feet are loose and you're bringing your thighs and squeezing the inside of the horse's rib cage here. So while you are going to in fact have contact here, you don't want to be gripping and squeezing because what's going to end up happening is you're going to fatigue in these muscles because nobody can keep that squeezing up for a prolonged period of time. 
So you're going to end up relaxing and you're going to end up falling onto the inside balls of your big toe, which is going to in turn make you push your heels down. When you get to this position, then you're going to start to hollow your back and use the reins more for balance. So all of these things are not what we're looking for. To come into play for a neutral seat, we want to make sure that our stirrup leather is straight down, the holes of our stirrup face forward towards 12, and the bottom of our stirrup is indeed parallel. Now, just from the simple fact of me talking and moving my feet, I glance down and I see that my stirrups are starting to turn where they're angled to the inside. So I'm just gonna reach down, and once again, I'm gonna be very picky about the foot placement of both feet. And that way, I'm going to learn how to indeed be able to place my entire leg from my hip, knee, and ankle joint into alignment. That way I can keep my leg in a neutral position where my stirrup leather hangs straight down, the whole of my stirrup is forwards towards you, and the bottom of my foot is parallel with the ground. Just this simple technique and exercise will do wonders for the placement of your feet. Always make sure that you glance down on both sides, make sure one leg is not further forward than the other, and make sure that you have even distribution of your weight across the platform of your stirrup. One other very simple technique and wonderful off-horse exercise that you can use, these are called balancing pods. I got these in a four pack. I use these all the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them on the ground here and I'm just going to simply step on them in the center and I'm just going to first try to keep my balance on the pods. Now you'll find when you first get on these they buck you off, they rear. <laughs> so all of those things are going to be difficult but what you want to try and be sure to do is not allow your heels to roll back and touch the ground. Really try to stay on the balls of your feet, keep an on-horse position, engage your core, and try to find that stability where it really starts to help with the really small muscles around your ankles. The stability in your ankles is key when riding. So the more that you can get that stability in your ankles, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Just simply using the balance pods to balance is a great way to start using an off-horse technique to help you further your riding skills. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you all stay happy, healthy, and safe. Don't worry, we'll all be back to getting on our horses fairly soon, and I cannot wait to start teaching and doing riding clinics again. I want to thank my trusty sidekick over here, Lockett, for making her video debut on the couch today. This is her permanent spot, normally every day. But I'd also like to thank one of my great longtime sponsors, Melissa's Custom Conchos, for providing all of the lovely conchos that go on my stirrups, on my saddles, and they're actually not on my saddle yet, but they will be. Guys, I just want to give a little bit of a kick to the small businesses. We are going to be suffering through this. Please make sure that you pay tribute to the people who spend their time trying to make their living as a small business. We're going to need help through this, and as time goes on, it's definitely going to be something that we need a jump start to get going again. So I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to grab one of my books if you don't already have it, Solving the Riddles of Writing. This is one of eight titles that I have written. This is a great book. What I've taught today is only the tip of the iceberg. There's so many more exercises in here for every part of the body. Thank you so much. Make sure to tune in to Tara Jones Writing and Training. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and like my videos, and I will keep bringing you more. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.